Say hi to the internet. Hey, Cat. Right. I'm going to scratch the shit out of Mommy. You can't hear her little frustrated grunts right now. Well, we have... It, it's... Coincidentally, we have a very animal-heavy what the fuck is wrong with you this week. Hmm. And... Something's kind of wonky with my lighting lately. I don't know. I didn't do it. No, it's like all of a sudden my shot is really dark and it didn't used to be. And I have so many lights in here. I'm going to figure that out. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Well, I'm just looking at the thumbnail and I'm like. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I was noting at the start of the show tonight that when animals do the crazy shit, it's normally not, not horrible like humans do. No. Like, normally they'll do something like this, and we got video, and this I mean, is... my girls stampede up and down the house. We have a single level house, and it's like... They're ten and a half pounds each, but you'd swear we had a herd of rhinos running up and down this place. Well, we've got video for this first story, and I think this is probably one of the best videos we've ever had for a story. This is this that's, is magic. That's a high bar. This this happened in Missouri. Uh, a woman yes. a woman went outside to check on her on her pony, and well, this happened. Come on, computer. Play nice. Hey, don't chew on that wire. That's not a toy. Don't look at me like that. That is that is a corgi <laughs> oh sneaking <laughs> out riding a pony to ride the pony. <laughs> the, the, the corgi snuck out to ride. A, this, this comes it's, to us from Missouri. Shut down the internet. We've reached maximum cute. Is, is a corgi riding a pony? It's a one-eyed pony. Yeah. That's even cuter. I know. Uh, a dog riding a one-eyed pony into the night is surely a spectacle that needs video proof. A Missouri woman made sure to eat exactly that. Springfield News Leader reports that Callie Schreckner pulled into her driveway Thursday night at saw the sight of her neighbor's corgi sitting on her horse Cricket. Uh, Schnecker says the Corgi's owner owners are Mennonites who avoid going online, so they likely don't know their horse is gaining internet fame. <laughs> or their I dog. Know, though, aren't Corgi's legs, like, this long? Yes, they are. How did a Corgi get up there? I don't know. We've got, we've got... It's not like they get really good air. I'm gonna see that again, because it's just, it's just magic. Like, did the pony lay down for the corgi to get up? I don't know. It's, it's just the corgi. Peggy, <laughs> hey, are you just going to sit just out of my reach and glare at me now? Yeah, that's what we're going to do? Okay. That was a wonderful thing that happened. Right. Now, now, you see, if it had been a... That's the thing about the difference between animals and people on the show. If it had been a person doing that, something horrible would have happened. Yeah. But animals are wonderful, and we don't deserve them. The, 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 the puppy the puppy just wanted to ride the pony. Now, if it had just been some random dude... You'd be would, like, get the fuck off my pony. Yeah, just just hop, he would have hopped the fence in the middle of the night to, climb, to ride someone else's pony. But the, the dog, you can't you can be like, aw, puppy. This is a happy little dog. <laughs> that was, that is a mad... That, that, that person was just in the, the perfectly correct place. Yeah. That's definitely a right place, right time. Yeah, because if you, if you tried to tell that to someone without the video, they'd think you were insane. It's fun watching animals, like, meet each other. We have we have two cats at the shelter, Cheddar and Matlock, who are, like, best friends. Cheddar yeah. and Matlock. I don't know where they get the names. You named... Someone named a cat Matlock. My cats, when I adopted them, were Wawa and Kiosk. Because they were found behind a Wawa. Their brothers were quick check and circle K. Shelters run out of names after a while. But uh, so there's this this third cat and those two are just like best friends. They're always wrestling and chasing each other around. And there's a third cat in the room named Tagalong. And she's a girl and they've decided they like her and they want to play with her. And she doesn't really get it. 
So it's a little like Peppy Le Pew and that cat because they come up to play with her and she's just like, what What are we doing? And then they both roll over and show her their bellies and she's like, I don't get it. <laughs> but she's coming around. Wawa is a convenience store chain. Yeah. So, so that was the nice story about animals. I think this is the first time... I don't want not nice animal stories. Well, this is the first time we found. I, I pro, there might have been more of it doing this so long, but this is the first one that leaps to mind of animals being complete dicks. Uh, Hemingway bear. Hemingway bear. Well, okay, but th- th- this Didn't is. Did we do a drunken radioactive boar or something? We we well, this one has. We have a video of this one, and it's kind oh. of let let we have more video. Um. Let's ha- let's have a look now, shall we? So this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, home video, and you have to watch in the background there. You can't really see- you have to look in the background carefully. You see it. There's a dog over on the stove. Yes, there is pulling down pancakes that were left there. I mean, pancakes are delicious. And uh, if you get there, he is. There's the puppy coming around the couch now. Uh, now if you, now he's he's going over there pulling down another one. <laughs> Here goes the plate. Um, you've got to wait for it a few seconds here. However, I can't really blame him. I really like pancakes. <laughs> Dog days of summer are quite a ways off, but one golden retriever in Massachusetts got its own heat cooking after he attempted to steal a pancake off an oven stove. Last week, the Southwick Fire Department shared a three-minute video from a home security system. In it, a golden retriever can be seen walking toward the kitchen range in an attempt to pull something down. The dog eventually pulled a plate off the stove and began to eat the fire department said were leftover pancakes. When the dog pulled the plate down, it switched on the ignition button on the gas stove. Oh, no. After several minutes... Oh, a, there's a fire! ...an item left on top of the stove began to ignite. The smoke alarm began to sound, which prompted another gold retriever in the house to join his companion on the couch. Eventually, okay? eventually, the two dogs napped. The homeowner's alarm system alerted emergency responders who, resp- who arrived at the house to contain the flames. The homeowner's not at home at the time. <laughs> they are just getting on the couch like... Are they okay? <laughs> the dogs are fine. Everybody's okay. fine. But yeah, there they are. They're just like, well, there's a fire... And we're gonna get. Well, we're gonna have a sleep now. They might not have napped, or like. No, they they just they, they were the dogs were absolutely fine. But, uh, yeah, but inhaling smoke makes you tired. <sighs> so even if they're fine, like that could be why they napped from the smoke. But I'm glad they're okay. It's just it's such a dick move. They're like they're not even barking at the fire. They're not even trying to to start to, to tell people. They're probably people. scared. No, they they're fine. They're just hanging out. Dottie's terrified of the smoke alarm, and the smoke alarm in our old place was super sensitive. And now every time something beeps on TV, she gets like. Some people are pointing out that I didn't realize this until just now, but they're pointing out that this is the this is the live incarnation of the this is fine meme. Oh. This is the there's that yeah there's the fire department and the dog I love the dog does the oh I did something bad oh yeah look at him <laughs> I'm oh, very sorry I did yeah something happened I did something very sorry, bad human oh buddy you just wanted a pancake well it's just, I blame you it's... <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> Oh, look, he's giving him pets. He's like, it's okay. You're still a good dog. <laughs> the, the dog started a fire. <laughs> he, it, not on purpose. He just wanted a pancake. John the Wizard Channel is like the new dog shaming champion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you gotta you gotta put your food away. <sighs> oh. You gotta... Well, you can't you, just leave food out. You, you said... you. You, you talk, I got a, a a Labrador now. We've got a got a black lab now, and there he's Loki is a dick sometimes. My sister has a black lab now, and uh, she lost an entire peanut butter and jelly sandwich in like thirty seconds one day. 
Oh, she geez. went to answer the door. And when she came back, her sandwich was gone. There's and she thought my nephew ate it. She's like, Patrick, why did you eat my sandwich? And he's like, I didn't eat your sandwich. And then she sees Zoe just like smacking her lips. Dogs, uh, Labradors in particular, they are like walking furry vacuum cleaners. Yeah. They will inhale. So Zoe loves that she lives with a two-year-old because two-year-olds drop 50% of the food you put in front of them. That's kind of the problem with Loki. His previous owners, yeah. before we had, before Sarah adopted him, his previous owners had kids. And Loki got all the food got dropped. Dogs fucking clean up in every sense of the phrase. Yeah. Dude, small, they will love that small child. Because small children just shed food everywhere. <laughs> and and when we got when she got Loki, he was a little bit of a porker at that point, mm -hmm. which is why he's on. He's we have to regulate his food now because. Well, yeah, my sister's a dietitian, so Zoe's not going to get any junk food out of that kid. I just I want to be organic. I love the fact they started a fire. They're like, well, what do we do now? I don't know. You would take a uh, nap. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If we sit down, it'll look like we didn't do it. <laughs> That's the classic cat trick. Is, has Grady done this to you? Where like you hear a loud crash on the other end of the house, and by the time you get there, he's just sitting there on the opposite end of the room cleaning his butt. Like, yeah, I don't know what happened there. You should take care of that. <laughs> yeah, Grady has tried that. Most of the time, though, he just when something falls over, he runs out of the room. Middle like... of the night last week, Dan got woken up by a loud noise. Like went up thinking there was a burglar found the cats sitting in front of the open liquor cabinet because they can open doors now they're little raptors <laughs> staring in awe at three bottles they had knocked out <laughs> well we don't know what happened here they just it just flew open and they fell out you have ghosts yeah oh well here this is oh boy I don't understand how this even happened, considering this is from Scott. Which is why this is confusing me. <sighs> Cops realize Tiger is stuffed after 45 minutes standoff. Uh -huh. Scottish farmer frantically called, cop frantically called cops to report a tiger in his cow shed, sparking an armed police standoff only to learn it was a large, cuddly, stuffed animal. Bruce Grubb, 24, was throwing a housewarming party when he spotted the bizarre sight and called police, fearing his pregnant cows were about to be devoured. Um, the frightened farmer said the first officer who responded to the scene was so scared, he refused to get out of the squad car. Northeast police even checked a local wildlife park to see if they had an escaped tiger on the loose. I mean, it could, yeah, they have zoos in Scotland, I imagine. But I, I think clearly what happened here is he bought Calvin's old house. <laughs> and Calvin forgot to pack Hobbs. After armed cops engaged in a 45-minute standoff, <laughs> they realized the supposedly terrifying beast was actually a big plush toy. When it just didn't move at all. It's unclear how the stuffed toy got into the shed. Yeah, that's weird. 45 minutes. That's almost an hour. We've got... Do you get the feeling... It wouldn't go that long here because they would just shoot it. Do you get the feeling not much happens there? Did you see Hot Fuzz? <laughs> well, I'm... the swan is loose. I'm just like, we got a fucking tiger! Everybody scramble! Something to do! And just like, all the cops are there. They've got the guns out. They're That's like, the most exciting day they've ever had. And it's... It's it's a stuffed tiger. I mean, it's a big stuffed tiger. <laughs> you can't be too careful. Like, you laugh at them. But if you got called to deal with a fucking tiger, <clears throat> would you just be running up on that thing, figuring it was probably stuffed because you live in South Carolina? Well, no. And I'll explain why using tech support. I mean, support. everybody there has guns, so it would get shot. I'll explain why using tech support as a metaphor. When someone calls in to tech support, you never believe them. I'll explain why. 
You have to, because if they, if they tell you something is wrong, and you attempt to troubleshoot, you will eventually find out they've done something like not plugged the computer in or don't understand that the monitor has to be connected to the computer or listen i had to t t call tech apple tech support last week because i had to update my os and something got corrupted and it was not my fault so when someone so if someone calls in and says there's a tiger on my property and you live in scotland your first step there is to think well that's not logical there. I mean, there's a bamboo, there's a baboon street gang in Paris right now. <laughs> yes, but the zoo actually made it clear the baboons got out. You think if a if a tiger got out of a zoo, people would be like, "Let's just not tell anybody." Let's I just. Mean, it's, great. it's Great Britain. <laughs> You're like, oh, we don't want to cause a fuss. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to get everybody all excited right around tea time. I look forward to your comments. <laughs> it's, if if a tiger gets loose from a zoo, they going to call somebody. You, yeah, I mean, it's probably going to make the news. It's not just going to be like, well, suddenly a tiger magically appeared in Scotland. That'll, that'll work itself out. <laughs> That's got to be a Doctor Who plot somewhere, right? <clears throat> somewhere in the 150-year history of that show, they had to do a tiger in Scotland. They did dinosaurs in London. Close enough. Oh, all right. This, oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like we've had this story before. Not this exact story, but this story before. It's from China. And I, this is about learning to let go. That that's that's the first that that's what the story is about. This the story is about learning to let go. We don't get a lot of stories with a moral. Man drops iPhone eight in cafe toilet, gets stuck trying to retrieve it. We have done almost this exact story before, except the guy was in a bar. Man in Luzhou, China's uh, uh, Guangxi autonomous region recently made national news headlines after getting his arm stuck in a squat toilet while trying to retrieve his iPhone 8. The man, surnamed Tang, had been drinking with some friends at the, the local hotel's cafe last weekend. At one point, he had to go to the bathroom and apparently decided that checking his phone while leaving himself in a squat toilet was a good idea. Never oh, is. It's not even, yeah, there's not even anything for it to bounce off of. It's just going right down the pipe in one of those. Uh, as you probably already anticip anticipated, Tang fumbled and dropped his new iPhone 8 in the toilet. <clears throat> Tang had paid around $1,300, that fancy handheld. He wasn't going to let it literally go down the drain. So as soon as the iPhone 8 went down the squat toilet hole, he got down on all fours and stuck his arm in after it. He couldn't reach it, so he kept pushing his arm further in, all the way up to his shoulder. <clears throat> At that point, Tang realized two things, wasn't going to reach the phone, and his arm had become stuck in a public toilet. Like, they didn't even make Flash Gordon do that. <clears throat> he only had to put his arm in a tree. Wow, that is literally a... the only part of that movie I remember. That is a deep cut. That is a literally deep cut. Literally the only part of that entire movie that I remember. Wow. That is it. Flying blind on a rocket cycle. Sorry. Um... No, it's it's just he. Oh, his arms all cut up. Oh, honey, you're gonna get sepsis. Mm -hmm. I hope you got some good antibiotics, bro. For one thing, <clears throat> we're making these fucking things too expensive. I know. Why do you need a, why do you need thirteen hundred dollar phone? Why does the phone need to cost thirteen hundred dollars? That, well, that's really what I mean. Like, why does a thirteen hundred dollar phone need to exist? Because unless it's also a vibrator and can cook, <laughs> not worth it. But yeah, it's that's that's way too that's way too that's way too expensive. So yeah. you know, if if he had literally dropped thirteen hundred dollars in the toilet. But, a lot of money. On the other hand, it's gone. 
Yeah. When it's gone, it's gone. Let it go. Indiana, let it go. Because, you know, it, that's... Because now you're going to get sepsis. This is not one you're going to be proud of later. No. And you're not going to have WebMD because you don't have your phone. Now, here's what blows my mind. All right. This dude, of his own accord, dropped his own phone in the toilet hole. I mean, probably not on purpose. Yeah, but it was his. He dropped it. Then he stuck his arm, of, again, of his own volition, stuck his arm in there. But the Global Times reported the man negotiated compensation with the hotel immediately after the incident. The hotel paid him off for what? I mean, I guess if you were really litigious, you could claim that that toilet was unsafe, but that's that's a stretch. A little no bit. Intended. Little bit. That's that is because you didn't have to shove your arm down there. And that's not the intended use of a toilet of any type I'm aware of. It's it's not the hotel's fault if you drop your if you drop stuff in the toilet. It's not I'm how going that works. after it. You're not supposed to go in there. No. That is a point of no return. That scene in train spotting, not an instruction manual. No. You can't actually squeeze in there and swim. And why would you want to? I'm very sorry your very expensive phone is gone. That sucks, but... And next we have some more wonderful flying stories. It seems like the flying stories are pretty constant these days, doesn't it? Naked passenger prompts Alaska Airlines flight to return to Anchorage. Anchorage, Alaska. An Alaska Airlines flight to Seattle was forced to return to Anchorage early Wednesday after a passenger locked himself in the bathroom, took off all his clothes, and refused to follow crew instructions. A um, Kate uh, Daniluk, a passenger on the flight, told the Associated Press she knew something was wrong because the flight attendants kept going back and forth in the aisles and had to put on rubber gloves. Were they going to give him a cavity search? I think it was just a matter of they didn't want to touch the naked dude. Yeah, I guess. Um, after Alaska Airlines Flight 146 from Anchorage, Seattle, returned to Anchorage oh. due to a passenger not following flight attendant's instructions. Put on your pants seems like a pretty basic thing. Yes. Um, think about how many people every day touch everything in an airplane. Mm hmm. You want to be naked there? I mean, <clears throat> most places in public, you wouldn't want to be naked because there's just too many strangers coughing on and touching everything. But an airplane? That's not. Even the air is recycled? You don't want to be naked there. I just. <laughs> why, though? What prompted you to go, okay? I'm going to lock myself in the bathroom and strip now. Also, airplanes are really cold, so you're not going to impress anybody. <laughs> They're always freezing. Grady, what are you, are, really, are you, are you cleaning yourself right now while we're doing this? Three. Yeah. Your butt's, butt's not going to lick itself, man. He's, he looks very satisfied with himself too, but I've been I've been abandoned by my cats. They nope. all left me. But that's <clears throat> fine. I I can think of no circumstance in which this would seem like a good plan. No. I just, just why? What was, like what was the goal here? I, I don't understand what the pl even if you're like I'm I'm uncomfortable on this flight. I don't like being in closed space. I'm just going to get naked in the bathroom. No. Maybe you had a change of clothes in your carry-on. But you have to put those on, though. And you can't just lock yourself in there and not come out. No. You have, they, they, they don't like it when you don't come out. 
they worry. <laughs> okay, Lady uh, Lady Menchow says, your penis is not suitable in-flight entertainment. Because, say it with me, no, no one, one wants, wants to see your dick. dick. Unless they ask specifically. Someone may want to see your dick, but it's best to just assume no one does at all. Just it's, that it's it's really a good way to go through life. Just assume nobody wants to see your dick unless they specifically <sighs> express otherwise. Unless someone comes up to you and oh, says, "Oh, hi, little raptors! Did you hear the treat bag?" Now I'm surrounded. <laughs> all right, we'll have some treats. Unless someone comes up to you and says, "Excuse me, sir, may I see your penis?" Yeah. Otherwise, we're conducting a survey. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Yes, you can have some treats. There you go. And finally, this week, I will give some to your sister. I am number one. I'm amazed this is not a Florida story. And number two, this is one of the most baffling headlines to unpack I've ever seen. I, I I'll I'll just let the let, let the uh, the audience try to digest this one for a second. What? That's what I said. I that's that's like two different headlines that accidentally got cut together, right? Mm mm. Because those don't go together. Mm mm. Boulder man was arrested this week after police say he lit his boxer shorts on fire in his apartment in an effort to draw the attention of law enforcement so he could alert officers to a shooting. That hadn't actually taken place. Daniel Thomas Flaherty, 24, was arrested on suspicion of first-degree uh, arson and false reporting to authorities to, uh, Tuesday. He's also char facing a charge of introducing contraband uh, after deputies reporting finding a pill in his boot while booking him into the Boulder County Jail. According to the arrest affidavit, Flaherty called 911 twice in the early morning Tuesday. <clears throat> to report that people were going door to door, quote, gunning people down in his apartment complex. Police determined these claims to be unfounded when, when Flaherty later said he was having a bad dream and wanted to go back to sleep. So what? At 6.50 a.m., Flaherty called 911 again, but this time said he had lit his boxer shorts on fire before leaving his apartment. Police and firefighters responded to the complex and found the fire was out, but he had damaged a portion of his apartment's wood flooring and caused smoke to fill the unit. Police said that in addition to a pair of boxer shorts, Flaherty had ignited toilet paper and some crackers. Every line of this story just keeps getting more baffling. Officers found evidence of cocaine and marijuana use in the apartment. No other units were damaged. When police found Flaherty nearby, he told them he lit the fire to get police and firefighters to come to his apartment because his phone was not working. He told so officers he to sleep. Yeah, well, he told officers he was not on drugs. Maybe um, that's the problem. No, I think he was on drugs. Maybe that pill they found in his boot was one he was supposed to take. To keep the voices out. No, he said he's not. He's not on a prescription medication, cocaine. I is. You guys gobble down all those treats already? Yeah. Okay. You know when you have cocaine on your premises, you don't want the police to come see you. No. That the the object is to have them not show up right what <laughs> people are in the channel go what was the plan what was the fucking plan <laughs> uh, i don't i don't know you know back remember back in the back in the 80s when we had this is your brain on drugs yeah yeah remember that 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 was not very effective i think no. it would have been more effective was Drugs will make you light your underwear on fire to get the police to come because you think people are shooting other people in your apartment. That's a much better way. Because you're get... hallucinating a mass shooting. Yeah. You will and light your best solution to it is to set your underwear on fire. You will light your underwear on fire to send a signal to the police. Old strategy, Cotton. That's 
that that would be a, a much better way to get people not to do drugs. <laughs> I. I, no, I have no more treats. Well, I guess I do, but I'm not going to give you any more treats. Of all the underwear, toilet paper, and crackers. He's, crackers don't really strike me as something, as a flammable thing. You know, something you burn. Maybe if they were in a box? Like if he had like a box of saltines and he lit the box? I don't know. I, I don't go around lighting shit on fire. <laughs> I don't have my authority on lighting shit on fire with me it's, today. It's not like Lord of the Rings. It's not like the beacons are lit. Gondor calls for a no, not with your. They don't. Did you see? Did you see Gimli lighting his underwear on fire for any of that shit? No, because that's not how it works. <clears throat> I should have. I should have asked John Reese Davies when I met him if that was an outtake that well, we didn't know about. It's not Gimli it's... just waving his boxers back and forth. Lit on fire. Uh, I he would okay. Totally is probably the best pun. He was arson around. <laughs> nice, nice. Apparently, Doritos are very flammable. I didn't. Who knows this? A uh, demented demon. Who's lighting Doritos on fire? <clears throat> Tyrion Lannister. If you believe their Super Bowl commercial. I must have missed that one. Really? It's so good. They have Peter Dinklage lip syncing to a Busta Rhyme song, eating like the super hot Doritos. And then they cut to Morgan Freeman, who's in like, a, like everything's frozen. And he's doing like the Mountain Dew ice and he's lip syncing a Missy Elliott song. And they have like, a rap battle with Doritos and Mountain Dew. It's I'm not doing it justice. It's a really good commercial. Everything you just said sounds insane. Yes. It's a Mountain Dew Doritos Super Bowl commercial. So yes. They didn't do Puppy Monkey Baby this year, and I'm happy about that. I think the first thing we learned this week is um, sometimes it, when animals do the crazy shit, it's adorable. When you break into your neighbor's place to ride the pony, it's not adorable. It's creepy. The corgi can get away with it because the corgi is adorable. Yeah. <clears throat> we've Little learned lips. We've learned that Labradors will set your house on fire for a pancake. So will I. <laughs> I like pancakes a lot. We've learned that the cops in Scotland have really really nothing to do. I don't really blame them. I'm not just going to roll up on a random tiger and assume it's not real. You just assume all tigers are real unless proven otherwise. Yeah. You take the tiger at face value. And I've made it 41 years not getting eaten by a tiger that way. We've learned if if the toilet goes, if, if the phone goes in the toilet, let it go. It, it's, it's, a, it's a tough loss, but sometimes you got to just take the L. If 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 your phone falls in the toilet, let it go, because, brother, it's gone. I mean, you're not going to be able to save it <clears throat> anyway. No, that, that 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 is, I don't care if it's... iPhones in water? iPhones in sewage? The iPhone 8 is water resistant, but yeah, there's water yeah. resistant and there's water resistant. But no. <laughs> <clears throat> We've learned that um, naked in in a airplane bathroom is no way to get through life. No, no, it especially is a way to get hepatitis. I do love that there was a standard procedure in place to break out the rubber gloves to handle the naked person. Do you like? Do you really think about what it must be like to be a flight attendant? Because we all act like it's their job to serve soda and shit. No. That's not really their job. No. Really, their job is to handle shit when you're all going to die. Well, that, and they also have to sort of deal with a plane full of and, imbeciles. Yeah, and deal with crazy naked guys in the bathroom and shit. Like, 
That's a tough job. I mean, they have, they were like busting out the, they, they must have like naked people drills. It's like all the problems of being a first responder combined with all the problems of working in retail. You just smack them together. And finally, we learned that if you're lighting your underwear on fire to call for help, you can't handle your drugs, son. Yeah. Your plan needs work. You're, you're, you're a bit of a bit of a lightweight. You might want to. Also, if people are running around your apartment complex shooting people, lighting a fire is not going to improve your situation. No, no, that's that's kind of that that makes it worse because not only are is there someone with a gun just mass killing, now your underwear is burning, and you can't exactly shelter in place in a place that's on fire. No. So don't do that. Because now, now you have no pants. Because you lit them on fire, and your dick's out, and you're gonna die. Except you're not, because you can't handle your drugs. Dick's still out though. 